Kia ora. My name is Charlie Grosso. I was born in Taipei, Taiwan, as the only daughter to the only son. I don't know my ancestry well, the land I grew up in, or my parents for that matter, because I was sent away out of, to a foreign land at the age of 11. This dislocation of soul and identity could have had unimaginable consequences. But I was lucky. I had access to a great education. But millions of displaced youth aren't so lucky. There are 65 million refugees worldwide, and the number increases daily. Less than 1% of them will have a chance to attend university. Only 2% of international aid is spent on education, and their year in mark for primary school children and 18 plus, leaving it a gap for adolescents at risk. Yet, there is a flourishing of edtech solutions. However, the adoption rate amongst refugee students are extremely low. But why? They lack digital literacy. We spend a year talking with refugee families and learn that they do not experience the internet the same way you and I do. How often do you guys Google for information? <laughs> Just this morning, I Googled, what time is it in New York City? Which is where I live. Are there bears in New Zealand? <laughs> and the latest UN report on poverty. This is not their experience. They understand the internet as passive instead of proactive. They're observers, not participants. Other than YouTube videos, music videos for entertainment, the idea of search was simply not taught. But with the penetration of smartphones and increase in connectivity, I believe we can close this digital literacy gap. And this was our aha moment. We don't know what we don't know. The youth were never taught to see the internet the same way you and I do and to engage with it, to cultivate it, that proactive participatory experience that you and I have. Hello Future is a month-long digital literacy boot camp designed as intervention. We provide hardware, connectivity, and in-person training so that the youth can be empowered to become a lifelong learners and take and direct the course of their education rather than passive, waiting for the bureaucracy to sort itself out. And if they could direct the course of their education, then they have a greater agency in dictating their future. This is Amal. She was 17 years old, living in a refugee camp in northern Iraq. We met her when she was 17. She and her family have been living in a refugee camp for five years. She studies with a single textbook. Amal wants to go to college. She wants to be a doctor. We worked with her in our program and introduced her to a variety of online learning resources. A year later, Amal not only took her entrance exam, she got accepted into the American University of Sulaimania. How does this apply to New Zealand? We believe with our rapid on-ramping of digital literacy that we've developed, it can be adapted and applied to all underserved communities beyond the refugee context. And as part of the EHF family, we feel that this is a unique opportunity for us to forge a deep collaborative process with both the community and the government to create a project here for your underserved youth. And maybe, perhaps, we can use that as a model going forward to do this kind of work globally. And the first step in this process, we're hosting an open session this afternoon to hear from you and learn how we can best adapt this work for the New Zealand context. Thank you. <laughs>